Welcome back to our TLE Agricultural Crop Production. It's me again, Teacher Johnny, to be with you in our new lesson. For today's episode, we will learn about applying recommended time and rate of fertilizer. And after the lesson, you should be able to Computation. Supplying a certain amount of plant nutrients determine the amount of fertilizer to be applied for a hectare based on the composition of the fertilizer materials to be used. Here are some examples of how to determine the amount of fertilizer. First example Ammonium sulfate contains 21% nitrogen. This means that 100 kilograms of this nitrogen carrying fertilizer contains 21 kilograms of nitrogen. To calculate how much ammonium sulfate is needed to supply 120 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare, we simply divide the 120 kilograms of nitrogen needed by 21%, which is the nitrogen content of ammonium sulfate, and multiply the results by 100. So we have here the formula. Fertilizer needed is equal to recommended rate, that is per kilogram per hectare, divided by the percentage of nutrient of the fertilizer multiplied by 100. So let us substitute the formula. Kilogram needed of fertilizer needed for the ammonium sulfate is equal to 120 kilogram of nitrogen per hectare divided by 21 percent multiplied that by 100 so the result is we have 570 kilogram of ammonium sulfate per hectare the same formula may be used with any of the materials containing nitrogen phosphorus or potassium example number two One wants to apply 80 kilograms per hectare of phosphorus as a single superphosphate 0, 020. 0. The computation appears below. So let's see. So we have here the fertilizer needed. Single superphosphate is equal to 80 kilograms of phosphorus per hectare divided by 20 times 100. The result is 100 kilogram of super phosphate per hectare. Example number three. Let us compute for the number of kilogram of muriate of potash that is 0, 0, 0060 needed to fertilize one hectare using 0, 0, 0060 recommendation let us substitute the formula fertilizer needed for muriate of potash is equal to 60 kilogram of potassium 
per hectare divided by 60. Multiply that to 100 and the result is 100 kilogram of 0, 0, 60 or 100 kilogram the weight of potash per hectare. Example number 4. How to calculate the percentage of fertilizer elements from known amounts of fertilizer materials? Given the quantity of fertilizer with the following composition, find the number of kilograms of available nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in the mixture. We have a 150 kg of ammonium sulfate, analyzing of 21% nitrogen. We have 600 kg superphosphate, analyzing 20% of phosphorus. We have 100 kg potassium chloride, analyzing 60% of potassium and 850 kg total weight. Solution To determine the analysis of a fertilizer mixture, multiply the quantity of fertilizer by the percentage of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in it, and divide by 100. We will use the, power, the following formula. Weight of nutrient is equal to weight of fertilizer times percentage of nutrient divided by 100. First, we have the kilogram of nitrogen and the weight of nitrogen. It's equal to 150 times 21% divided by 100. The result is 31.5 kg of nitrogen. For the kilogram or the weight of phosphorus equals 600 times 20% divided by 100. The result is 120 kg of phosphate. The third one is the weight of potash or potassium equal to 100 times 60% divided by 100 and the result is 60 kg of potash. Example number 5 How will you find the percentage of available nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in the whole mixture? The solution is Divide the weight of each plant nutrients by the total weight of the mixture and multiply by 100. Thus, we use this formula. Percentage of nutrient is equal to the weight of nutrient divided by the total weight of the fertilizer times 100. The weight of the nutrient is derived from the previous example. The total weight of fertilizer is given in the problem. Now let's proceed to the solution for the first element. Nitrogen is equal to 31.5 kg of nitrogen divided or divided by total weight of the fertilizer 
which is 850 kg times 100. And the result is 3.7% of nitrogen. For the phosphorus, the weight of nutrient that we derived from the previous problem is 120 kg divided by the total weight of the fertilizer and multiply that with 100 or 100 and the result is 14.1% of phosphorus. Next, for the potassium. Percentage of nutrient is equal to the weight of the nutrient which is 60 derived from the previous and then divided by the total weight of the fertilizer times 100. The result is 7.0%. This could be summarized as the grade is 3.7, 14.1, and 7.0. Sample number 6. How to calculate the amounts of fertilizer materials to make up a fertilizer mixture of certain percentage of fertilizer elements. Given the following fertilizer materials with their corresponding available nutrients, how will you find the amount of each of the plant nutrients needed in making 2,000 kg of a fertilizer with a grade of 12, 24, and 12? Urea analyzing at 45% nitrogen. Ripple superphosphate analyzing at 50% phosphorus. And murid of potash analyzing of 60% of potassium. Solution 2000 times 0.12 is equivalent to 240 kg of nitrogen needed. 2000 times 0.24 is equal to 480 kg of phosphorus needed. 2000 times 0.12 is equivalent to 240 kg of potassium needed. How will you find the number of kilograms of each of the fertilizing materials needed to make the mixture? This is the same procedure as in examples 1 to 3. For nitrogen, nitrogen is equivalent to 240 kg divided by 45% nitrogen times 100 and the result is 133 kg of urea. Next, for the phosphorus, 480 divided by 50 times 100, and the result is 960 kg triple superphosphate. For the potassium, 240 divided by 60 times 100 is equivalent to 400 kg potassium chloride. Since you wanted 2,000 kg of fertilizer with a grade of 12, 24, and 12, you must add sand or some other inner filler to make the desired weight of which. 533 kg of urea, 160 kg of triple superphosphate, 100 kg of potassium chloride, and we will need 107 kg of sand, coconut shells, and any filler. The total will become 2,000 kg. Sample number 7. Calculate mixed fertilizers. 
find out the number of kilograms of the separate fertilizer materials needed for the preparation of one metric ton, which is equivalent to 1,000 kilograms of mixed fertilizer of 5, 8, 12 grade using ammonium sulfate that is 20% nitrogen, calcium superphosphate that is 16% phosphorus, and morate of potash that is 60% of potassium. Work out the quantities of the individual fertilizers required for 100 kg of 5, 8, 12, Fertilizer mixture contain 5% nitrogen, 8% phosphorus, and 12% potassium. Then multiply these figures by 100 to obtain the total requirement of fertilizers for 1,000 kg of mixture. For nitrogen, 5 divided by 20 times 100 and the result would be 25 kg of ammonium sulfate. Phosphorus is equal to 8 divided by 16 multiplied by 100 equal to 50 kg calcium superphosphate. For the potassium, 12 divided by 60 times 100 equals to 20 kg of muriate of potash. The total is 95 kg of straight fertilizer. We will need 5 kg of filler to make it 100 kg of mixed fertilizer. In preparing 1,000 kg of fertilizer mixture of the 5812 grade, 250 kg of ammonium sulfate, 500 kg of calcium superphosphate, 200 kg of borate of potash, and 50 kg of the filler are needed. That is how to compute for the fertilizer. I hope you follow and understand. Methods of fertilizer application. As a general rule, a fertilizer material should be placed in the soil in such a way that the plant can serve it. This involves not only different zones of placement but also the time with respect to the age of the plant, the fertilizer is to be applied. First method is broadcasting. It is a method in which the fertilizer is applied over the surface of the land. It may not be harrowed, flowed, or released into the soil. This method is usually practiced in rice field, pastures, and loads. Another method we have side dressing. Fertilizer material is placed in or in between the rows of crops like vegetable or corn or placing around the plant or trees. In row crops, side dressing may be done simultaneously with cultivation. The purpose of side dressing is to ensure, ensure the availability of plant food nutrients, particularly nitrogen, during the critical growth periods when plants are taking up nutrients rapidly. The third method is the band, row, or localized placement. Fertilizer material is applied in bands to one or both sides of the seed or plant. On row crop, 
cups. The fertilizer is placed in bands or strips on one or both sides of the road, about 2 inches away from and below the seeds. Third method, we have the foliar application. The chemical is mixed with water and spray the foliage of the plants. Method, applied with the seed. Fertilizer is broadcast together with seeds or the seeds are coated with fertilizer by means of an adhesive such as cellophas or gum arabic. And number six method, fertigation. This involves dissolving the fertilizer materials in water and then apply it with the use of sprinkler. Methods of determining soil fertility. First, field fertilizer trials. As the term implies, field fertilizer trial experiment is carried out in the field. It can be done or it can be conducted in different places under different seasons. When managed and conducted properly, the results obtained from this method are very reliable. Number two, true soil analysis. Soil analysis is a rapid method of assessing the fertilizer needs of crops. The principle involved is that the amount of available nutrients in the soil are directly related up to a critical point with the growth and yield of crop. Soil analysis consists of four phases, namely proper collection of soil samples. X chemical analysis. Number three, interpretation of analytical results. Number four, formulation of fertilizer recommendation. Tissue analysis. This is customarily made of fresh plant tissue in the field. It is a quick way to test and is it, it is important in the diagnosis of the needs of growing plants. Sap from ruptured cells is tested for assimilated nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. For another elements such as the magnesium and the manganese are also done. The concentration of the nutrients in the cell sap is usually a good indication of how well the plant is supplied at time of testing. Number four, nutrient deficiency symptoms. An abnormal appearance of the growing plant may be caused by Efficiency of one or four nutrients element or nutrient elements. This visual method of evaluating soil fertility is unique and it requires no expensive equipment. It can also be used as a supplement to other diagnostic techniques. Loss of nutrients from the soil. Fertility of the soil is not lasting. It is usually lost through mismanagement by farmers or in the land. There are many ways in which soil fertility is depleted. First, loss through the crops. Plants utilize growth or large quantities of nutrients from the soil for their growth. Plants having reached their maturity are harvested and sown. Thus, the organic and the minerals that compose the harvested crops are taken away from the farm. The constant removal of soil fertility through the crops will make the soil poor. 
This is the reason why production will decrease year by year if we do not fertilize our crops. The amount of soil nutrient lost through the crops depend on the kind of crops grow. From a standpoint, crops may be classified in three categories. First, heavy eaters. Those crops that are utilized in large quantity of all the three essential elements or it may be a heavy feeder as regards one element, but a light feeder as regards to another. Medium feeders consume not much of the food elements, not light heavy feeders. Number three, we have the light feeders. Consume only a little amount of the plant food elements. Loss of plant food through surface runoff. Rain water or excess irrigation water which runs off the surface of the ground may carry not only soil particles and the food they contain but also the plant food which get dissolved in the running water. Number three. Loss of plant food through leaching. Even if we do not plant, the minerals in the soil will be mainly lost by leaching. That is, soluble substances go in the water that drains down to the lower depths of the soil, beyond to reach the roots. This is especially true in case or in cases of sandy soil. Soil erosion. This is the greatest enemy of the farmer. Erosion is the removal of soil from the field through natural forces. Methods of conserving soil fertility. First, the application of commercial fertilizers. Number two, application of farm manures or organic fertilizers. Manure. Practice of growing special crops like legumes and their alone intermix with the other crop for the purpose of flowing, growing them into the soil in the green stage and they have reached suitable height for the poor flowering. Or cover cropping. This is the practice of growing cover crops. Especially legume crops protect the land from erosion, heat of the sun, and bit of the rain. The cover crop is a crop planted, especially in cultures of permanent crops such as coconuts, coffee, curricard, and the like, mainly for protection as well as for the enrichment of the soil. Mulching. This is the practice of placing mulch or mulch materials above the soil, such as straw, paper, sawdust, leaves, and the like, to protect the roots of plants from excessive heat and cold or from drought. This practice also controls the growth of weeds. In the organic Mulch will compost will be turned into organic fertilizer. That ends our lesson for today. We hope to learn something in our discussion. Go over now with your module, answer the other activities and assessment. We have queries about tasks for our subject. Don't hesitate to post a message in our Facebook Messenger group chat. Send me, send me a private message or text me to the listed number in the activity sheet or in our group chat. Have a nice day everyone! 
always keep safe and healthy, especially in this time of pandemic. In your learning, let's help one another.